let's see. Oh, I need to share my screen. And let's see. Uh, oh, nah, gosh darn. Too many links with the word community. Uh, meeting minutes. All right. So, um, oh, okay. So, uh, did you get a chance to do? Um, so you did the. We did the. Did we merge that? Um, you know, no, I, I was just wanted to ask you that should I add any other errors like you didn't respond to my ma the message earlier on Geta. Oh, so I was asking the same that I'm should I push it. any more errors to this or like um, should, should I remove the WIP that's like you can directly move Yeah, it. I think I think this yeah, is I good. Think, uh sorry, I must uh I have I have Gitter open on like three different computers and sometimes I don't I forget to hit enter on my response. Um, That's not worse. Let's see. Let's see. So, um, I'm not trained. 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 Looks good. Looks good to me. Yeah. Looks good to me. Yeah. yeah and um, that any thing, not a number thing, was working fine. I tested. Okay, it. great. Cool. Okay, great. That's awesome. Cool. Um. That's awesome. So. So, yeah, I think we're good here yeah, then. I think, I think this is probably just change log, but I don't know if we really need to do change log. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, change log. All right, I'll just go ahead and merge this right now. Um, let me put this here. Maybe. All right. And then, uh, were you going to get a chance to do the model stuff by uh, this, like, within the next, you know? Oh, I actually, or... honestly, I just forgot the new model tutorial. I, okay. I completed within a couple of days. Okay. Most probably, like, maximum a couple of days. Like, I for just forgot about this. Okay, yeah, no worries. I was just, just wondering. Um, let's see. That would be awesome. So, let's see. Two steps. I, I almost, like, added the stuff I want. I just wrote down the stuff that I wanted to add. It won't take much time. I'll do it. Okay. Probably Sweet. By tomorrow. Sweet. Um, model tutorial. Um, uh, so, yeah, I will uh, make changes. Okay. Soon. Um, and then let's see. Models. Uh, merge model not trained uh, exceptions. Okay, and oh, and then let's see that that other guy. Um, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Agen. He said he looks like he um he did the regression. He added a regression model for TensorFlow, which is nice. Um. A TensorFlow regression model. So that should be good. I have yet to I have yet to go mess with it, but I need to um, today. So that'll be nice to have another model in there. Um, it's you you have tested TensorFlow. Like, is it is it very heavy on the system or like it's okay? Uh, I mean, it's it's. TensorFlow is like this beast of a thing, um, and it works really well, um, you know, for a lot of things. But it doesn't. It it's definitely slow for like things that would be quick with Scikit. Like it's it's a bit of a overkill um, for what most of what we're doing. It's great. It's a gr really great for a lot of the image processing stuff that many people do, and we'll have to get into the image processing eventually. Um, but for now, it's a bit. It's it's it it's you, you, you basically if you import tensorflow like it will take like 10 seconds just to load just to do the import statement um on on even like a fast computer usually which is just it's a bit of a pain in the ass um but other than that i mean it's great that's just the you know if, if we're saying is it is it overkill it's a bit overkill sometimes um but it's nice to have it in there right 
Uh, let's see. Okay, what was... Ah, I closed... Okay, that's what happened. This became that. So let's merge this guy. Um, conflicts. Oh, no. What happened? I wonder where we got... Conflict. They weren't here, right? Uh, you just got the option to squash and merge it. Did you... Yeah, but it, yeah, but it won't. Oh, wait. Now it's gone. Wait. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was actually mentioning this. Only. Like, it was squash and merge earlier, and then it became. Yeah, complex. then it was like complex. What the hell? All right, okay, that's weird. But we'll hopefully roll with it. All right, model added. Fixes. What issue was this? Okay, 125. Okay. It's exactly a hundred comments after. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. All right, good, sweet, right, done. Good, sweet, done. Um, um, so, so, yeah, so Sudarsana so, said that she is going to be busy. Um, for the next coming few weeks here. Um, she has some stuff going on at work. So the she was going to get started on the web UI maybe, but now it sounds like we're not really sure. I'm actually going to move this stuff here this stuff that I wrote down here. after the meeting last time to down here because I didn't actually talk about this with anyone. Um, so we can talk about web UI stuff now. Web UI stuff. Uh, okay. Um, this would be API steps for using models. Okay, so this I just like outlined how one would use a model, um, and this is the same code that's in same code that is in. Uh, Examples or service HTTP examples web API. Did uh, did Sudarshana talk to you about the initialization? Uh, what initialization? Uh, what initialization? I don't, like she, I not. <laughs> she was mentioning that you would you would be making a new branch for the UI stuff. Oh yeah, like so we thought about well, so yeah, we 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 were thinking about it, and we're like, okay, there's a couple ways we could do this, right? You could put it under your org if you wanted to, if you want to keep it separate, if you want to drive the UI stuff, um, or we could put it under a different branch under this the main repo, or we could put it as a subdirectory. Now, the reason why everything else is a subdirectory right now is because every time there's a commit that happens, it runs all the CI on everything as it stands in master, which makes sure that everything stays integrated. Um, you can also do, I mean, you could do it other ways too. And if you had it as a branch or if you had it as a separate repo, um, you, um, you could just base it off the latest release, which is probably a good way to go as well. Um, but it just matters. You cannot it, um, initialize it, it under Intel. Do you have that permissions to like initiate? No, I can't. I can't make another. I can't make another. I mean, I could make another thing, but um, I could, Yeah, I could. I could do that. It just involves me. Uh, I have to do a bunch of process stuff if I do that. Um, so whereas I've already got this one, and we can put things under this one um, without without having to go through a bunch of process um, from the Intel perspective. Um, so yeah, but then also you know if you want if you want to just lead the web UI um, and have it under that code ed uh, org, we could you know start doing stuff over there, um, and you could just you guys could just lead that, um, and I'll just you know jump in whenever you need help on things. Um, 
but it depends what you want to do, whether you want the work to stay under the Intel banner or if you want it to, to spread under that one, because we can always put it back under here later. Um, so it depends, it depends like, what you want to do. This was the, our discussion that it doesn't even matter. Like mm -hmm. Everything is fine, basically. There's nothing like we have pros or cons of anything. Okay. All right. Yeah. If you don't have any strong feelings about putting it anywhere, um, I would say let's just put it all in one place. Um, okay. So because you know that then then it's all in one place. Um, and the other thing is that that, that could be like a, a great project idea for the next mm -hmm. GSOC if you are like into participating. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that could be a good one. Um, yeah, that could be a really good project idea. We'll probably we'll probably do that then, because um, I was just you know that guy was asking me about project ideas, and I was going to shoot out. He it sounds like he's already leaning on that one thing, which is operations and making operations into models, or models into operations, which is basically just like using the train func or using the predict function of uh, of a model. So uh, let's just make some notes for GSOC well, well, twenty. Actually, this is like quite early for GSOC 2020. Yeah, I was I was surprised. He, he was coming in here pretty early. He's like, I wanted to start thinking about what to do. It seems like it was, I don't remember when we started last year, but it seemed like it was after winter. Um, it's like a very big thing for some people. Like when you do it, you feel like it's not that big of a deal. But okay, some people just do it for the sake of that. Yeah, they're just like they wanna. They just wanna be involved in it all the time. Yeah, uh, it's like an internship opportunity. You don't get a lot of paid internships in at undergraduate level. So oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's yeah. That's it's great thing to have on your on your resume. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, web UI, so, making yeah, models into operations. Web These are a couple ideas here. The web UI is definitely a very full-fledged full project. Um, so yeah, we could leave that as, as GSOC 2020. I was thinking, so I've got this presentation on Saturday, and I don't know how far I'm going to get on things. Um, but it depends it depends how far i get this week i don't i don't know if i'm going to get very far or not but i might i might actually just start on the web ui because if i can go to that conference and then show a web ui at least part of something that might be helpful um i may i may leave off part of it so i may just do like um operations and then do models and stuff as the gsoc project but it all depends honestly right now i probably won't even have time for that so it's uh, it'll probably just stay stay a project idea, um, because yeah. Are you actually experienced idea. with like web stuff? Yeah, I have a lot of yeah. I have a lot of experience doing web design stuff. Um, so that's why you're so confident. About yeah, that. yeah. I can, yeah. I can if it's a web websites websites I can throw together very quickly. <laughs> um, things that aren't websites take a little more time. Um, it's sort of can, like can you actually suggest I, me? I had this question like what are the best tools to use like when you're making a static website with I a mean, blog, a basic blog? Yeah, if you're trying to do a blog, it depends. Like, it's you not a blog add... for me, it's actually for Coded. I wanted to make a website, a yeah. static website basically with a blog, a little blog. Yeah. With, about yeah. the projects you're making. You know, let's see. Yeah, so Hugo, Hugo I've used recently is pretty good. Um, have you seen Hugo? Uh, no. Okay, so Hugo is a good one. Um, also, I think there was one based off Hugo that was like really point and shoot. Um, this isn't a very good description of what it looks like. Basically, uh, it builds these static. You build these static websites, and so you you can you there's all these templates and then you it ta basically takes the markdown files and then it puts them into the templates um and it it looks it looks good um and it's ready it to uses go markdown files that. what it uses markdown files yeah it uses markdown files yeah so you write your yeah you write your blog post in markdown and then it it dumps them into uh um it dumps them into HTML files. 
it's good. Um, let's see what it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, I would say. What is this? Set exceedance. Uh, this could be good. Um, but oh, it might be like a paid thing. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff around. Like Hugo has been. Ooh. Yeah, this could be good. I don't know. Oh, this. Yeah, this looks like some kind of paid thing. Yeah, I would recommend just messing around with Hugo at first. The other thing that is, uh, so this Jekyll, have you seen Jekyll? No, I have zero experience in web design. Yeah, so I mean, this is stuff that's going to, uh, you, you're not going to need to do really web design when you're using these guys. Um, so with, with Jekyll, um, the, the bit, so Hugo, Jekyll was sort of like the big static site generator. Um, and if you make a site, uh, if you make a Jekyll site and then use that as like your GH pages branch or your, you know, coded.github.io and just like only put the Jekyll site in there, GitHub will build the Jekyll site for you and then deploy it on GitHub pages which is nice because you don't have to, you know, rebuild the site every time. And if you make any changes to the Git repo, it will rebuild and redeploy without you doing anything. Um, so this, this is, this is really good and well established. Um, so this is another good one to do. Um, let me write this down. So let's see. Um, static site generation. Uh, Cool. I can never remember how to spell that. Um, GitHub will build your site for you. Apply HTML to GitHub.io. Hugo. Um, yeah, Hugo. Hugo. I mean, there's Hugo exists. A lot of pe people are using it lately. Um, uh, because the, the reason why people, I think a lot of people switch to using Hugo is because uh, it's written in Go. And so the guy gives static binaries, statically linked binaries, which means that like there's no dependencies. So you can just download this binary and run it. And all of a sudden you have a website. Whereas with Jekyll, you have to set up your whole Ruby environment and stuff. And so, uh, you know, people, there were a lot of people doing Ruby as web development, like still are, but like Ruby was a big thing when web development a few years ago, especially. And so Jekyll was, you know, very friendly to all of them because they already have all their Ruby stuff set up. Uh, whereas now like, as when Go came along and this guy built Hugo and Go, um, everybody else who wasn't a big Ruby person or, you know, could was, you know, Ruby, Ruby has some weird oddities about setting up the environment, just like you get weird oddities with Python and setting up pip. Um, and so people said, oh, okay, here's this Hugo thing. Like it does the same thing as Jekyll pretty much, but like I don't have to fight with it to get it set up. It just works. Um, so that's become big for that reason. Um, but if you can get your Ruby installed correctly and install Jekyll, then it'll be nice because GitHub will build it all for you. Because GitHub's whole backend is written in Ruby, and so uh, I think they just you know import that module and then like build things. But uh, back to DFML stuff. Um, yeah, thank you so much, and sorry. For yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, that's always, always feel, always feel free to shoot questions like that. Um, and then as far as, as far as just like JavaScript is concerned, like if you wanted to write your own website, I would say, go, go mess with the react stuff. Um, that's seem it seems to be everybody's really into react these days. Um, well, we talked about flutter, we talked about flutter. um, and flutter is great, of course, uh, but of course. I actually got to know about react and just got to know that we have to write our own CSS and stuff. Everything we yeah. have to do like react yeah. is just for state management. Yeah. So, so I this didn't is, actually like like it. Like Flutter is so much better in that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, Aspect. It's, it's much better. Um, much better. what I've been um, using I've been for using CSS Flutter. stuff is just this Material UI um, library. It's it works. Um, it's not it's not always like exactly what you want, but it it does it does give you all the CSS that you want. Um, so like they'll do. Um, let's see. 
components like this is like in built components we can yeah. just import them yeah so okay. like yeah so this is it's it's all these it's all the u css and ui stuff and like making it look nice um and then integrating it with react um so that's this is this is good if you want to do react it, it's, it's it works i just um, wanted to know this um, like great this is so much great yeah here so i'll put that yeah, down so See. Let's make sure that this is what comes out. Yeah, materialui.com. Um, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, and I wrote down, I just wrote down some notes for like things that the web UI should have. And I'll convert, I think I'll convert this into a GSOC project. Um, so, you know, we need to be able to create and configure new models and sources. Uh, we need to be able to list all the available models and sources which are available for creation. Uh, we need to view all the repos in a source. We need to be able to edit data, you know, like pull up a little little form type thing to edit the data uh, edit the various feature data if we need to change something and we need to be able to add add new repos and also like probably a list to see all of them um, for models you know we need an interface for training you got to upload your data and stuff uh, we need an interface for accuracy assessment maybe you know you upload your test data set uh, or you know that's that has to do with sources really so you create new sources to do that stuff um, and then we need an interface for prediction um, which would basically just be like hey you know here's this data give me a prediction um, this base, basic stuff like that would be that would get us off the ground right um, and this is just just I don't know if you've started to dabble with the JavaScript yet um, but this is what the API looks like right now um, so basically this is just saying, uh, take the port of where you're at and replace it with 8080. Um, so if you're on localhost 5000, it's replacing the port with 8080, which is where we start the HTTP API. Um, so we create this API object. We say, hey, I want to I want to create a new source object, um, and then we give it we give it the data for the source. Uh, we say upload that data to my training data set .csv. Uh, we configure it and we say, you know, here's use this, use this my training data set.csv as the file name. Um, this is probably going to get, you know, turned into. So the all the config objects that we are using um, were uh, they, they essentially their dict representation is this. Um, and that allows it to like, so you can set like this. For example, the source arg might be uh, you could set you can set like the what the source should be and then what the config for the source should be. Only we already know what the source should be. It's CSV here, so we we don't we don't specify in there. Um, and but but oh, we'll make objects for this that make it make it more clean looking than than this sort of mess. Um, and then you create the context. So basically that's the same pattern that we're doing with the async for to create the main object. That's the configure. Um, and then we do async for, and then we call the main object and then we get the context. Um, and so this is where we create that context object. Um, and so that was creating the training context. Um, and then we do the same thing for the testing uh, source. And then we create the test source context, um, and so this is just an example of saying, okay, like I want the I want 100 repos out of that source, um, and then you know the repos are returned to you in a, a key value mapping of the source URL to the repo object. Uh, but this is how we would change that into an array, um, and then we create a model. We configure the model, scikit-lr, um, and we create the model context. 
Um, and so when we create the model context, this is what I was talking about with the features and saying, you know, I wonder if we should maybe move this, uh, we should move the features from the creation of the context. Like, because remember when we first did the scikit model and the scratch model, I think it was actually the scratch model, uh, we found out that the features were being passed to the train predict and accuracy method. And we said, well, I mean, why, why are we doing that? If they're being passed to everything, why don't we just pass it to the context? Um, and now I'm realizing, you know, as we save and load those models, uh, we end up having the model do some saving and loading and then the model context also doing some saving and loading based off those features. So maybe we should just put that, put that config into the model rather than the model context, like put the features into the config of the model rather than the model context. And then this context call would be the same as the source one where we're just saying context like with the name of the context and uh, we'd pass the features in with the configuring of the model uh, did I can't I know we talked about this briefly before do you think that that's a good way to go or is there yeah, yeah that would be better okay it would Let's be a do cleaner that. way Let's to do, do this that. like yeah okay yeah. cool I, I I feel like we talked about this before but now we have a, I think a for sure so uh, make it so let's see um, let's, i think we had models here some models um, did like I, I guess you opened an issue for that did you oh i like, did i don't actually I, I hey wow okay right. i've been really stressed out trying to get all this done and my brain's been all over the place <laughs> let me make sure i reference that issue um let's see i think you're right i think i did um Oh, and so I swear I did too, but I'm not seeing it here. Maybe I went to do it and I, I, went to I, it forgot. It. I forgot. Okay, let's let's okay, just let's, uh, let's, let's just, just create it then. Uh, let's just create it then. So, so okay, uh, model um, move. Features from init of model context to model. Um, so, uh, oops. So right now, um, features are passed to the init method of model context classes. Um, Uh, instead, let's make features a part of the config of a model, dffml.model, model, dot model class. Okay. Um, so we should probably settle down soon, like, because this these kind of changes require a lot of refactoring yeah okay. yeah yeah this yeah. is and this is this is where i think this one was an important one to do um because it this is the this is inconsistent with the way we're doing everything else um everything yeah. else is being done by the config and all of a sudden we we were doing this and 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 we probably shouldn't have done that um so but it's it's a learning process so uh, one, two, three, or three, two, three, one. Yeah, so need to move. Yeah, and the more models we add, then we have to go change them all every time we make a change to this. So we really, yeah, yeah so need to move features uh, to model config. All right, great. Right. Oh, did you actually merge the regression model? Uh, no, I have the not merged the regression, regression model. model. I need to... He, he did a good you, job, but it, I needed it, to change the formatting on this. Is it actually using the model not trained error like somewhere? You know, you're right. I don't Does think it, it is. Right. I forgot about that. Um, I need to change the... So yeah, basically... This I needed to add spaces here, um, and then 
I need to, it's kind of things that like aren't really worth going back and forth to explain. Um, this needs four spaces indented here. Um, these are these are things that would take too much time to go round trip, so I'm just going to indent them. Um, but let's see, is it doing that? Um, not a directory. Okay, it looks like he's raising not a directory error. Um, yeah, so, you were raising the not a directory. Uh, I was doing that. Ah, uh, see, that's me. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Now, so. now it's merged like model not trained so yeah so i'll go make that yeah, let's so see I'll thank you for bringing that up i need to do that then um so notes for myself um i, 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 I change it for everywhere you you can just request the change actually uh do what do what i actually changed it everywhere i changed it for tensorflow 2 and oh, okay Great, but yeah, this is the one that hasn't been merged, so I need to go change this one, right? If I'm gonna do, um, oh, so it does not merge. Like, yeah, this you can request the change yeah, too. Not. Yeah, I can request a change, but I was gonna pull it down and do like some indenting on this stuff because oh, I, you know, I think he's in a different time okay. zone, and to ask him to indent is gonna take a whole day. So I'm just gonna go indent it, um, and then merge it. Yeah, he's you know, from and India too. too. Okay, like he's. Okay. Uh, was I saying his name right? Was I saying uh, his name right? Uh, Agen? Agen? Yeah, Agen. Agen. Okay. I, 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 I don't know, actually. He's okay. from South India. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said oh, Sudarsan is also from South India, right? And you're from North India. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when we first started and you were telling me that. Um, Sean needs to um, make model not structure into model not uh, trained. Error. Hey, what happened with the? Uh, um, did you get an internship uh, for this summer yet, or were, I thought you said you were doing you something. Doing something. Yeah, I had an interview, but like that interview was not successful because Google was looking for only third and fourth year people because they are like oh, more into oh, giving geez. PPOs. Oh, it's hey, oh, hey, dumb. Hey. Um, so I, I am actually looking for a summer internship still okay. Okay. if okay. you have any leads do let me know oh yeah you know I will oh yeah you know I will uh, yeah. John needs to make a not a director or, or uh, to to uh, try to need to indent um, uh, well, I just I wanted to ask you this too like did you receive the GSOC hoodie you should have. Oh, I received my oh, T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, I got a T-shirt. You got a T-shirt or a hoodie? Like a T-shirt. All the mentors are gonna get a hoodie. Oh, I got a T-shirt for some oh, reason. Some but it's probably because right. I'm it's in. Because I'm under the Python Software Foundation. Python software foundation. We're not like. Yeah, bro. We're not like. I think. I think yeah. there's like think, people who are directly like under Google, Google Summer of Code, Google and then there's the. Software Foundation has Software like uh, Terry, uh, one of my coworkers. She's actually the mentor for the Python Software Foundation, and everybody else under there is like a sub org. So we probably only get T-shirts. For the uh, I, I guess it was a Google employee who got a hoodie. Probably oh. I, oh, I saw maybe a video. Uh, cool. Well, I got I am my still waiting for my T-shirt. Yeah, you got yours. Okay, cool. I am waiting for it. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah, got mine, I think, I two days ago mine, or so. Ago. So, so it's, so, yeah, and I was, I felt like yeah, that was pretty I was, fast. I, like was pretty I wasn't fast. sure how long it was going to take. Um, but yeah. But right, yeah. So I'm going to add this here. As a so there was going to be a mentor meet. So would you be called there? Like, it would no, be I think great. that's going on right yeah, now. Um, right um, now. And that is um, also yeah, because also, Perry is there because Perry it's there. only the top level orgs. Um, but I'm going to talk to her when she gets back and, and see how it went. I think she's actually flying home pretty soon here. It was in Germany. Um, is that the one you're talking about? The one in Germany? About the one in Germany. Yeah, I guess like there are a couple of mentor meets that happen. Like from each org, there are a couple of mentors that go. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That's I, the, I one Germany, yeah. Yeah. the one in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk to her as yeah, soon so as she I'm gets back and see see, see what see, what the what, what all the information was there. Um, but it it looks like from what I saw on Facebook, it looks like it was going well. So, 
Yeah. Actually, all the Python people were hoping that Python would also send some stuff to us, but it didn't happen. Actually. Yeah, I think yeah. Python uses Python all uses the money all that they the get as the mentor. They, um, they use it all. They donate it all to the Python Software Foundation or something. To I can't remember what they use it for, or they donate it somewhere. They just um, Python G S O C. Where do they use their mentor stipends for? Um, mentors. Well, it's not here, I guess. Yeah. I, I have read yeah. this completely. Like, oh, yeah. I went through oh, it yeah. pretty clearly. Oh, the funds Google oh, gives Python as a mentor stipends are given through the PSF grants program. Grants program. So it goes here, whatever this is. Whatever this grant is. proposals. Oh, grant this is probably proposals. something oh, where you submit like a PEP or something, and then they give you money to go do it or something. Oh, okay. Very, very Python. Yeah, this looks cool. Yeah, this looks. Oh, workshops. Interesting. Yeah, this is something to look into. Oh, there's an online forum to submit grants. Hey, that sounds cool. PyCon grant objective. Oh, very. Oh, it looks like yeah, kind of specific to uh, to organizing Python Software Foundation stuff or doing projects for for that whole infrastructure there. But worth worth taking a look at for more info. All right. Um, I don't really have. Let's see. I think we finished going through that. Um, I can show you. I can show you real quick the uh, how that that um, um, that HTTP API looks. Um, let's see. Was I on nine zero nine zero last time? Yeah, it's here. I'll show you real quick what it looks like. Um, okay, this is this is my work on that on that it's dash. Um, okay, check out master. All right, let's see. So um, uh, course. Oh, not the MC config. Okay, yeah, DFMO. Alright, let's try this. Temp T and, and DFMO. Service HTTP server um, uh, cores star insecure. Um, uh, uploader. So we got to set the directory that we want to allow people to upload files into. Um, okay. Oh, and I probably want some logs. Log debug. All right. So weird. No logs. We'll see. Um, and then example or CD service HTTP examples web um, and then Python 3.7 M HTTP dot server 9090. So if we go here now, um, we look at the console reload. Error connection refused. All right, yeah, what's going on here? Log debug. Oh, I did a, there we go. Anyways. Oh, nah, yeah. I'm not on localhost. 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Um, 
All right, here we go. So it'll do, you know, it'll say created the API, created training source, uh, created the training data set, uploaded it, created the model. Um, and now, see, now it's loading TensorFlow and it ran the LR model. And so model, oh, accuracy. Huh, it looks like accuracy. Uh, I don't know what happened with the accuracy there, but it's okay. So here we got our we got our uh, our prediction back. Um, so yeah, so we can use the we can use all the stuff that we have um, within the Python stuff. We can use it from JavaScript now, which is which is fun. So, but that is really all. Um, I guess that's all for this meeting. That's unless you've got any uh, anything else you want to talk about. Uh, I'll I'll do the new model tutorial stuff, and I I just remembered I will add all the scikit models I find. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. When it, yeah, that would be yeah, that would that be cool. Would be cool. Um, the more the more the merrier, right? And then the other thing is we want to really think about you know okay, so here's here's this is sort of a more major thing is uh, uh, um, images. Um, Oh yeah, I, I I'm actually taking a class for images. Like oh yeah, CG stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would be that would yeah, be interesting would be, to see. Be... You know what what can we do with that? Um, because we've got we've got all the stuff. I mean, we're the images. You know, Python has a bytes object, right? And so we'd probably just store the images as a bytes object. Um, and then you know, there's not there's. I'm not. I'm not really sure what I'm not, I'm not really what sure we do from there. Um, from there. Um, I, I think like the feature but, stuff was more interesting for images. Like model you, stuff is a later stage after that features thing we were planning before G G uh, Which was that? Uh, which was that? The, the custom features like DFFML had sources, models, and features, right? Oh yes. Oh, oh I oh, forgot. Yeah. So. This I probably didn't make that clear. The features, um, the features are now the operations. Um, so the feature stuff all still yeah, exists, yeah, yeah. but I, I, the way that you generate the features is via these operations. Um, and so I'm gonna have like that's what I've been working on like a lot lately, um, and I'm gonna have by the end of this week is. Um, Okay, here I'll show you. I'll show you some of what it. Oh, dang, I think I just. I don't know if I can show you right now, actually, because I I screwed. I started to change everything, but basically, you can take um, um. Tell that. Okay, so you can take these. Okay, so this is this is. You write these operations, which are just like little Python functions, right? Like, this, and these ones, the example is that we're doing running like sub process and stuff, and just parsing the JSON output and using that as some feature data. Um, and so, what what we end up with is you know a bunch of these little operations, and we chain them together with their inputs and their outputs, so we can make these graphs showing like how the data flows through these various operations, and then we can query the graph to get whatever we want to be our data set for that repo, um, or to create you know a data set of a bunch of repos, repo objects, right? Um, Did so, you actually say like this so, This graph was generated by the yes. operation? Yeah, so, we can generate all of this. Um, and so what we're going to be able to do is have the web UI be like a drag and drop configuration of all this stuff too. Um, so it's you're going to be able to like you know really easily create new data sets by changing the generation, um, and and it it allows for obviously when we make so when we make models into operations you know these are operations right and so if we make a models predict function as an operation then that lets us really easily create complex features. Um, and so this is going to open up a lot of really interesting things, I think. Um, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and all of this runs concurrently. So like if you're processing a, you know, a bunch of, if, if you're doing like a bunch of network operations in all of these, like it'll all run at the same time, which makes it really fast. Um, but uh, what was I going to so say? It's like still open, right? Like we can, it would be this 
thing like community based like operations would be addable exactly exactly and they're all plugins as well so you can we're we're going to have a, a set of them that are within um the main git repo and then you can publish your own pypy package that contains these operations with that dev create script you know how you used it to create a new model package i have i have another one that creates a new package of operations um, and you can publish that to pypy and then all you have to do is you know tell people that go install this package and they'll have access to all these operations now that you've done um, and so people can just you know publish all these various operations and use them use each other's operations to create new interesting data sets um, and uh, and then obviously we've already got the machine learning so you can create your data set and pipeline it through the machine learning very easily um, this is sort of like you know the end 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 overarching goal thing that we've been working towards is getting all this stuff working, um, because it you know it, it provides a lot of flexibility with data set generation and with using the trained models. Um, you can you know you don't have to write you 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 don't really have to write code to make this work right, um, which is a really cool thing because it lets people who don't who don't know much about programming like they can they can get they can start doing interesting things, right? They can say, hey, when somebody emails me this Excel spreadsheet, um, you know, use this other Excel spreadsheet. So I, I have this Excel spreadsheet of all the things that, you know, I've manually classified or I've done a prediction, my prediction of by Googling, right? Well, so I trained a model using the web UI. I said, go train me a model. And then I say, every time, you know, I could have our operation that says, every time someone sends me a spreadsheet, go give a prediction on every row and email it back to them, right? Um, so it's, I think it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this. Um, you can list it in the meeting when it's like, it can be a good GSOC idea too. Yeah, this is going to be yeah, this definitely, this will be GSOC be idea GSOC type GSOC stuff. Idea. Um, I still need to flush out more. The other thing is, so, thing is, so you can run this, the, the, run the, this the cool thing, thing about this is when you define it like this and you just define all the operations and how they connect. Um, I've now got it. The major pull request that's going in right now is to let you run the same thing over the HTTP API as this command line interface. Um, so you can take this, this exports to like a YAML or JSON file and uh, that shows all the interconnections. And then you can feed, you can give that YAML file to a command line interface and it will run that it will run that as the command line program, or you can give it to the HTTP API and you can say, hey, when I hit the slash should I URL, run this data flow. Um, and it, it, you know, it enables you to, to only write the little operations, unit test those, and then the integration is just taken care of by this execution engine that we have. Um, and then, of course, it really easily allows you to, to swap in and out pieces and add machine learning places because you can just say, hey, you know, after you've done this safety check and run Bandit, I want you to feed the output of those two through this predict function um, for a model that I chained, trained on a data set of, of, of assessing a bunch of these and, and saying whether and manually classifying whether they are good or bad. Um, so that's going to be an extended part of this example that we'll do eventually. But um, yeah, so that's where that's where this stuff is going. But so is sorry, you cut out there. Is there a new operations tutorial up? Like no, did you, I uh, did you put up any like new no, operations tutorial? This is so I've been this, updating this. Um, I've been trying to update this, this, and actually, I need. There's an open issue to. If, if you had time to go go through this, I would appreciate that. I mean, I understand you've already got to do the model tutorial and stuff, but we need somebody to go make sure that this thing uh, makes makes sense. Because um, I did it, um, but I don't. I don't know if it all makes sense. So if you just read through it and could tell me if if it if it sounds reasonable or not, that would be great. Um, if you have time, of course. Um, just comment there's an issue open to say does this make sense um so if you get time if you could just say yes or no on there that'd be awesome um, yeah i actually i go through it okay cool um yeah so that yeah because i'm not sure you know i wrote that stuff and it tries to explain it and that's the stuff that arvind was working on he was kind of working on this operation stuff um and uh 
but uh, but I don't. He hasn't looked at the tutorial, the tutorial since, I it, since I updated it. Um, no one has, so no it would be has, it'd be great so to have a second set of eyes. Is yeah, the way the way that DFFML is structured, right? Is there's the sources where we're saving and loading all of this data. There's the models where we're doing machine learning, and then there's the operation, which is the you know we collect the data sets, and now we're going to have the in, in the way to collect we're going to have this way to collect data sets and we're going to have this way to you know easily use the trained models on other data um so yeah um it will i'll see how this is this is received when i go to b-side this weekend i want to i'm going to present this stuff and and talk about it and uh we'll see what people think whether they think i'm nuts or whether it's going to be useful so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for that too. Yeah. All right. Well, um, well if there's nothing else, uh, then I'll we'll, sign, we'll off sign off here, and uh, here. I'll see you next week. Uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, sure. All right. Have a good one, Yash. All right. Have a good one. Yash. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.